This is Andy Perua for ID Boxing. I'm joined by a blinded Ben Shalom here in Manchester. Ben, it's fight week, the first big one of the UK calendar. How excited are you for Eubank Junior Smith? Buzzing. It feels like such a long time because it was meant to be in December. Now we're finally here, January 21st, and it's just built perfectly. Liam, I went to see them in the gym on Tuesday with Joe McNally. And Paul was in there and Callum was in there and they're very confident. He looks, he looks good, he looks confident. This was the fight that he wanted. This was the fight that he came to me and said, Ben, if you can get the Eubank fight, I'll sign with you. And uh, that's how confident he was with this fight. And uh, he thinks it's made for him. It's a big name for his record. And it's one he thinks he can outbox. Eubank Jr. has been um, very vocal. He's had a few antics in the build up to this. He's kind of dismissed the challenge of Liam Smith as well and sees him as a, a lesser challenge than what Conor Ben would have been if they'd have shared the ring back in October. What are your thoughts on everything that Junior's had to say in the build up? He just plays the game and he's unbelievable at it. And I think he's pop more popular than ever. He really is after what happened with Conor Ben, but he knows this is a tougher fight than Conor Ben. I know that from, from speaking with the team. This was a fight they didn't want initially. and. Uh, it's a tough test, but I think he needs a test. He's 33. For me, this will be the biggest name on his record if he was able to come through. Yes, James DeGale, but that was a James DeGale right at the end. His last fight, really his retirement fight. This is a proper test. Liam Smith is ready. He's more active. He's had more rounds. He's had more fights in the past year, two years. And uh, yeah, it's a real, real tough test and one that no fighter that can afford to lose. Yes, the build-up's fun. Yes, the build-up's... You know, there's a, you can see they're very, very different people, whether it's um, the families, whether it's their personalities, but ultimately neither of them can afford to lose this fight. And, and, and I think they both know that in the back of their mind. Do you think it's easy for people to forget that there's only a one year age difference between the pair of them? Because in the build up, juniors made out as if Liam Smith's um, pushing on a little bit. But that, I think that's more so because of the career that Liam's had. I think Liam's achieved a lot. He's a former genuine world champion, which, which says a lot and is more than what Chris can currently say. And yeah, it feels like Liam Smith's been around forever, but we've seen his form in the past year or two. Incredible. And I think ever since the Kerbinoff fight, where for me he won that fight, and, and then Fowler and, and Vargas, and he's gone on and on. And uh, this was a fight he wants to top off a wonderful career, but make no mistake about it, he wants this to be the springboard for massive fights this year. Um, either one of them thinks this is a springboard for massive fights, but Chris is 33, Liam's 34. Yeah, it's uh, very, very even in many ways. There's been a lot of talk about the sparring, uh, the infamous sparring between a pair of them a few years ago. What have you been your thoughts on it? Liam Adamant that he hurt him, saw Joe Gallagher's comments that he did hurt him, he kind of winced, shall we say. Is that the route forwards for Liam if he's to be successful to work the body of Chris Eubank Jr.? I think a lot depends on what Chris Eubank Jr. we're going to see. Is it still the same one that used to go, go and go and go and go and was almost like a Duracell bunny that could just go every single round and, and not stop? At 33 years old, does he still fight that way? We've not seen it since George Groves, really. We've not seen him fighting in that way. Um, I think Liam knows he's a better boxer and I think Chris knows that too. So whether it's to the body or whether it's just fighting a fight that's right for him, and whether it, Eubank still has the energy to turn it into a fight. I think that's Eubank's best bet, is to turn it into a fight because we know he's athletic, we know he's durable, but whether he can or not, and Liam Smith's durable enough himself, I think it's an unbelievable fight. And the more you talk about it, you can look at it from different angles. I'd be very surprised if one of them stops each other. I think both of them can take a shot. Both of them are very fit. Both of them will, will be able to do 12 rounds, no problem. And I see Smith getting stronger later the later it goes and yes of course they want to hurt him to the body but I think this is one that goes a distance and it's just a war each round and uh, yeah I, I, I can't wait the arena the sold out arena with 15,000 scouts behind Liam Smith it's going to be a spectacle. Looking towards the future where does the winner go beyond this? Chris Eubank Jr is still mentioning the potential Conor Ben for it. Conor Ben and his team are adamant he'll return um, say midway through this year do you expect to see that one in the pipeline for Junior or do you think that he'll be looking at other options or what else could be on the table from a boxer perspective? I think maybe, look, the Billy Joe Saunders, I feel, is all, it's the biggest fight out there for him, but Kel Brook will be there on Saturday night. He he wants the winner. Golovkin, I know, is a fight that Eubanks always wanted. 
But Liam Smith wants a big fight too. Liam Smith wants to rematch Anfield. Liam Smith wants Kelbrook. Liam Smith wants to fight for a world title again. So those fights are all there for both of them. Eubank wants to fight for a world title. Eubank, as you said, wants to fight Conor Ben. Whether that can happen, I'm not sure. But there's big fights on the line on Saturday night for both of them. And yes, Eubank's a big name right now. And yes, he's a pay-per-view star. But this is his, this is his toughest test in a while. And this is a world-level opponent. And for me, he's never beat one. And this is a world-level opponent that's in good form as well. Just on the rematch clause, Ben, is it stated in there it has to take place at Anfield or is that just something which Liam said he wants to try and push for? Look, if, if Liam wins, it's on his terms and so we'll be putting it wherever, wherever we want. Um, Liam has shown the size of his fan base, really. We've sold out the Manchester Arena and a lot of that's down to Liam and his popularity in the North West and that'll be a dream come true for Liam. I know Tasha wants to fight there. I know, I know Callum still wants to fight there. Obviously, um, he's not with us at the moment and isn't with us. I think he's a fight by fight, but Anfield's a dream for a lot of fighters in Liverpool. It's never been done, but it all depends on whether BP can come through on Saturday night. He's confident. He has every reason to be, and as I say, it's a fight that he's, he, he's pushed for. The, this fight is happening because of Liam Smith, not because of Eubank Jr. Moving away from that main event, Essamon versus Congo. Again, we've seen promoters work together, yourself and Team Warren come together to make that fight. Was it an easy one to get over the line? You know what? I went When we did the Parker Joyce fight, you'll remember, we did Sam Antwi against Seko Essamon on the undercard. And I remember watching it and I was thinking, if Antwi was just a bit more switched on here, then he, he, he could have beaten Echo that night. And I, that's what made me confident that Chris, I think he's another level. And I think he can do the business. Don't get me wrong, Echo is a phenomenal athlete. Never lost. Hard as nails. But it's an unbelievable fight. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of working with other promoters. We want to be able to do that. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to make that this fight. And uh, it's a massive addition. It's everything. Again, it's one of them where everything's on the line. Echo, I think, is 33. Or oh, definitely in his 30s. He can't afford to lose. Chris certainly can't afford to lose. And both of them are very confident and we've seen the back and forth. It's a, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful fight and I can't wait. Florian Marku wasn't best pleased by um, Chris Congo's comments on Sky Sports about the fight which never happened. What did you make of Florian's tweets about the fight? Look, Florian's injured at the moment. He'll be back and I'm sure they'll meet one day. I think Florian... I think Florian wants big names. I think he... We know what an attraction he is. But let's see. Look, I don't want... They're both with us. I both think they're going to do very well. Chris has a big fight on Saturday night and then we'll see what happens from there. Clark Espindola, I spoke to Fraser just about um, his fight. It was a game when he was announced, it was a bit of a mixed reaction. I think it's more so at this point, people want to see Fraser with more recognised names because of what he's done to his opponent so far. But for those who were doubting Mr Espindola, what can you say about him? What should everybody expect? Look, I think we want Fraser to have rounds. You see so many heavyweights when they get to world titles and championship rounds and they're still learning on the job. Loads of them. And they're changing trainers and they're changing this and they're changing that because they've not worked it all out. We just want Fraser to have rounds and we're going to block out the noise. I think, yes, he's got to step up and we want that as much as possible, but he's fighting every six to eight weeks. No one's as active as Fraser Clark. We're giving him rounds. Espindola has never been stopped. So that's what we want for him. That's what we wanted from Camel. Because when we know he's going to be moved very, very quickly. And once he steps up, there's no turning back. And I think he wants to be fighting for a British title within the next six months. And all I want is, and all he wants, and all his team want, is rounds in the bank. And he'll get that. And it, if he can stop him, he'll be the first man that stopped him. And, and then we'll see him crack on and push on. I think it'll be Riddell Booker next. Uh, moving forward as well, Parker Massey, a uh, big ask for Jack stepping up from cruiser to heavy. We saw him in the ring there, similar height, but Joe obviously a lot stockier. What are you expecting from that and why did you make that fight? Jack's, Jack's had a tough time and he was pushing and pushing. And he, at heavyweight, he was pushing any opportunity he wanted, anything. And Kevin's his manager and I think they've always been out you know, trying to get fights and not earning. And, and he's a very, very underrated fighter. If you, his only loss is Richard Riappo and that, you see where Richard is now. That could have gone either way. And when we come to his hometown, he asked for the fight. He begged for the fight. It's a huge, huge moment for him in Manchester. 
I don't think people know what it's like from being from Manchester to be able to fight at this arena on a box office night. That's a dream come true. To be able to do that against Joseph Parker is a dream come true. I'd much rather watch that than see Joseph against uh, a Carlos Takam or uh, Kevin Johnson or, uh, I mean, there were loads of names. I'd much rather see it and it gives him a massive opportunity and a, and a good chance to make some good money as well. React Paul Glavatsky, uh, we saw Lawrence Okoli stop Christoph Glavatsky in the sixth round. Do you expect to see Richard do more, a more of a, a definitive job, more of a stunning fashion win? I don't know, to be honest. I saw, I saw, I watched his fight from last year and, it, and he, he's still got something left. He's still, he's still hungry, he's still, he still looks like he's still there. I think Lawrence dealt with him very well and made him look average, but he's a, he's a very good fighter. He's lost to Bradis, Okoli and Usyk and the Bradis loss, if you remember, was it was that, that ridiculously controversial elbow to the head or whatever. And I think this is a this could be a banana skin for Richard. I think Kluwak is the toughest opponent he's faced by far. Two-time former world champion on a stage like this. For me, this is where Richard needs to announce himself to show us why he's world level, to show us why he deserves that Lawrence Okoli fight that I think a lot of people are calling for, and to show why he should be a world champion. And, uh, yeah, let's see, let's see on Saturday night, massive night for Richard. On the name of Lawrence Coley, David Light, when and where can we expect to see that then? We'll announce that early next week, so after this fight, I think Monday or Tuesday will be announced. Just uh, look, we have, I think we have two male world champions right now in the country. We've got to treasure them, hopefully we get some more this year. And um, yeah, I'm just delighted to get moving on it and we'll announce that next week. Speaking of announcements, we're expecting something shortly about Taylor Catrell too. Now, obviously I've spoken to both fighters, they've both told me it'll be taking place back up in Scotland. But is there anything you can fill us in on? No. Uh, we've done a bit of filming and it was vicious. And that's all I'll say. And it all will come out and everything will come out about why it's taken so long. There's a story to everything. I think it's going to be one of the biggest rematches in recent history. I think it had to happen for so many reasons. Had to happen for the sport. I'm just delighted that Jack Cattrall got his chance again. And that's what we worked tirelessly on. We finally have got it. Fair play for Josh Taylor taking it. Could have ran away. Could have gone and fought Lopez. Could have gone and fought for much more money. And we have an absolute classic on our hands. And uh, yeah, next week we'll get all the details. Is that the most frustrating fight you've worked on um, since, since linking up with Sky, the rematch? Because obviously it's been over a year now since, well, close to a year rather, since the first fight. And everybody expected it to take place for rematch this is a lot sooner than what we're expecting it to do now. Yeah, it's been difficult, but Josh took time out. I think he got married and then changed training, which is a massive thing to do at that level. He was never going to fight last year. The earliest we could have done it is Feb. It's happening in March. I think I'm just grateful that he's getting a chance because that could have been the, you know, that could have been something that keeps Jack Cattrall up for the rest of his life. He lost a huge amount of opportunity, a huge amount of money, and always will. He'll never get to fight. Unlikely, he'll ever get to fight for undisputed again and win. That's going to be tough to take. I'm delighted that he's got his opportunity, and hopefully we can we can see uh, boxing correct itself and 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 we see an improvement in judging this year. Adam Azim returns on February 11th. Talk to me about that one scene, Mr. Azim back in the ring. Adam Azim back on February 11th. Yeah, obviously an uh, amazing start to, to life with us last year. This is his year. I think he genuinely become a superstar this year. Uh, he wants to fight very, very often. Uh, we've got Ramadan starting on March the, let me get this right, March the 22nd. March the 22nd, I think Ramadan starts. So we'll take that very seriously. That will see him out for for a month and then a few weeks after that but um, massive year for him I think we're going to see him take over I, th I really think uh, everything that people say about him is true and more and I think only the people that have seen him in the gym and that have seen him spar and that see him every day know how special this kid is it's, it, it, we're, we're sitting on some there's, there's no one else like it in British boxing I truly believe it a domestic rival of his somebody who was a free agent for a brief period Mr Dalton Smith he was unable to get that one over the line, Ben. Can you just fill us in as to why you believe he ended up re-signing with Matchroom? I think there was a, some sort of um, legal thing around matching. I think um, it was only three fights, which we couldn't do. I think there's a big management relationship there. And ultimately, I do believe 
and I've said before, I do believe he, he, he would have liked to come. But I'm not going to talk badly of anything because I want him to do well. I, I actually want him to do well. And I think he's got a great deal. And I think as long as he's boxing regularly and making good money, that's all you can ask for. And I think he will be. And I'm glad for him. And uh, who knows what the future holds because we just never know. But ultimately, um, that is what it is. And then just a couple of things I want to get your thoughts on. Um, he came out about the zones losses in 2021, uh, topped 2.3 billion. Now I know that's not your area, but as a, a rival to them, just want to get your thoughts on that. Look, I'm not going to comment on anyone else's business. I don't know. That's a broadcaster. I don't know what they're spending those billions on. I know. I hope it's not all boxing. Um, that is across all all that football and everything as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm delighted to be working with the zone on this event in a couple of territories. I think, I think uh, I, I have no idea about their accounts, why they are, why they are, and I, I'm not really bothered either. I was going to say that is a good little um, link as well because how did it come about working with the zone to move into other territories? Look, I think they're just trying loads of different things at the moment, and, and it's not a big deal. Let's say it's a broadcaster in another territory. We we sold it to ESPN in the past. We sold to a Fox in Australia, we sell all around the world and that's all it is. And uh, I think the more broadcasters and promoters can work together, the more we're going to get the big fights made and the more we're going to see big nights like Saturday night. Right, well, Ben, we'll leave that there now because I keep hearing Eubank's name mentioned around me, so I'm assuming he's just arrived. So I'll leave you to go and watch the, the final couple of workouts. Thanks for speaking to me in ID Boxing. Cheers, mate.